Hey, this is Zipper Designs from Noble Desktop. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use essential properties in Adobe After Effects. So what we're going to be first doing in this project is heading into this bubble pre-comp over here. And after that, we're going to be isolating its scale property, position, opacity effects, and the essential properties panel. Finally, we're going to use those properties at the pre-comp level to make some of those bubbles different from each other. So you can see this is what the project looks like when it's all done. Um, this technique is great. So just copy pasting a pre-comp usually has issues since changing the objects inside the pre-comp changes every copy of that pre-comp. You don't get individuality. Here, I'll show you what I mean by that. So like the typical problems with uh, like duplicating a pre-comp is that like I can't change the path of this thing and I can't change the opacity of it. Like I kind of change the timing um, and the fill color, but those are a bit roundabout ways to do it. So that's why this technique is great. It allows us to have copies of pre-comps and uh, to be able to control and change details at that pre-comp level. Um, this means we can have like a bunch of copies and each of those copies can have like their own individual animations. They can be made differently on the fly without having to make entirely new pre-comps or mess with your base pre-comp. And so like the only external asset that we're going to be using here is this test tube uh, graphic. And that's that asset is included in the project file linked in the description below. So uh, yeah, with that, let's get started. All right. First thing we're going to be doing is heading inside this pre-comp over here. Bubbles one, double click. And now we're in here and you see basically that singular bubble. Um, now what this bubble is doing basically is you can see that it's got, uh, you know, some positioning animation on it. Let's see. And it's got some opacity animation on it. It's got this echo effect. That's those like um, bubbles in the, in the back. Like you see those bubbles following it. And uh, and then we're also going to be adjusting the fill color with this thing. Um, this is just a guide later. Later, like this test tube here. Don't worry about it. It's not going to appear in the final render. Um, we're just going to be using the main comps uh, test tube. But um, yeah, so the first thing we're going to be doing is open up window essential graphics. There we go. So the way to add properties to essential graphics is pretty simple. I'm going to click and drag it so it is in here, circle position. And you can also do this. You can like right click on it and then add property to essential graphics. That's another way to do it. You can also do this with keyframes. Um, but that basically means that anything in here is going to be isolated. And that's a property that we could control on the pre-comp level. You'll see what I mean more as we go along. Um, if I wanted to, and you like you weren't sure what you can uh, put in central graphics, you just hit solo supported properties while selecting a layer, and it'll just give you a whole list of everything you can put in here. You can control, and that's, as you can see, quite a lot. But we're only concerned with uh, a couple of things here. Um, oh, I also want to put in my echo effect. So I'm going to toggle it open. I want to put in number of echoes, I think. Um, yeah, that's what I want. So I'm going to click and drag that there. And I'm going to type in fill over here. I want my fill color also to be controlled on the pre-comp level. Um, let's see. Oh, and yes, I want to name this. So I want to name this set of essential graphics, essential properties. Let's name them tube bubbles. And when it says primary here, it's basically the program is being like, so this is where we're pulling those properties from, right? I could choose like the main comp or the, you know, the test tubes, but what it's using for reference is bubbles, is the bubbles pre-comp. All right, with that, let's head back to the main comp. So now bubbles has these essential properties isolated. Very cool. Now I want my first bubbles to just you know, be fine. They look how they look. Um, I don't want to change anything about that, but I'm going to duplicate bubbles too. And let's open up those essential properties. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is changing this fill color. So I double click the fill color within the layer that I'm trying to change it. And let's change it to like near white. And great. So I could already see that there's going to be some changes. And that's going to help us be able to differentiate it from the other bubbles. Oh, there you are. I'm just changing the position. So I, ah, there we go. I found it. Oh, I just want to change the scale on this thing. So I'm going to head back into bubbles. I'm going to hit uh, S for scale. I'm going to click that and drag it over there. So we could also change the scale. See, now I can change the scale on my main pre-comp. Let's put that down to 80. 
All right, now I'm gonna change the position of these keyframes. So I'm actually gonna delete all these essential property keyframes and I'm going to have it start, well, you know, let's see, I wanna move it maybe a little bit over there. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch so I could start keyframing it. And I'm gonna, you know, have it move over there. And then uh, finally, I want it to like float out of the, the test tube. And I'm gonna actually easy ease all of these. You can do that by right clicking and go to keyframe assistant easy ease. So it like has a nice smooth animation in and out. And there we go. Now it has a different animation than the other blue bubbles. And oh, and I'm also gonna change the number of echoes to just two. There we go. And the opacity. I think I'm gonna keep that as it is. Now I wanna show you something. So you, you've seen these little icons over here. This is the push and pull icons. And what that means basically is that if I were to uh, use the pull icon, the pull will discard the changes that we made to our new bubble and it's gonna reset it to bubble one's settings. If I hit push, it's gonna apply the new changes to the base pre-comp. So, so if I hit pull over here, you can see it turned back into that other blue. But if I hit push, it, it then gave its own properties to the base pre-comp. So if you decide that you actually like the look of your altered pre-comps more and you want to, that to apply to the base pre-comp, you then can you know apply it back to the base pre-comp or if you decide that you don't like what you did, you can get rid of that. All right. So I'm gonna be making a third bubble with these very same uh, techniques. All right, let's see how it looks. Really cool. We've got, yeah, different bubbles of different sizes, speeds, uh, how many echoes there are, different uh, opacities. Um, and that was all done with one pre-comp and just uh, changing a couple of these uh, properties. So this technique is really good for projects that require a lot of similar animations, all with slightly different details. Uh, with cars, for instance, or a crowd of animated walking people. It's excellent for making different versions of an animation, like a logo with a changing background, for instance. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make a, a, uh, an essential properties animation in Adobe After Effects. If you guys have any questions, leave us a comment. We also love hearing suggestions for future tutorials. So uh, yeah, let us know. This has been Sapar Designs for Noble Desktop.